Hey guys, so today uh, we are going to walk you through how to access your notebook for the first time. Um, this is a kind of a long process, but don't worry about the end. Uh, it will be very easy and you won't have to do this every time. So today's main goal, we are going to be transforming your binder into an online notebook. Don't worry, you're not going to have to take all of your papers and upload them or anything. We've done most of that for you. Uh, most of what you're going to have to do today is just accessing your notebook and putting some of your information in. You may be asking yourself, why would we do this? It's March. Why are we starting something new? Um, this is something that kind of just occurred to Miss Harlan and I, and uh, we want to try it out. Uh, we think it will help you guys in a lot of ways, and I'm going to go through some of those reasons. The first reason that this online notebook will benefit you and uh, Ms. Harlan and I are that you can access your notes uh, and your work from anywhere. So with your online binder, you're gonna be able to get to your notes, your classwork, your data from uh, the stuff that you have from intervention when you are at home, when you're in, in other classes. This could be really helpful because if you have some notes in intervention that you think would be helpful in your English 1 or your IM1 class, you can access those in that classroom. Of course, you'll have to ask that teacher if you can use the, your computer to do so, uh, but we believe your teachers would be more than willing to let you do that. Um, you could also show at home, you can show uh, your uh, folks at home your data. Um, especially when you're showing growth, you may want to show that off. Um, if you have classwork that you started in intervention and you need, you know, you didn't get it done in class and you want to get it done in class, you can access that during Wolverine time. There's lots of benefits to having your binder essentially accessible anywhere. Number two, the second benefit is notes and classwork will be better overall. So the notes and classwork can have videos, they can have GIFs and links and stuff included uh, to other notes and stuff like that so that your notes and classwork will be easier to understand. You'll have help built right in. Um, we also will be able to have color copies, which makes things lovelier to look at. Um, we can't afford to print those in real life, so having uh, an online notebook allows you to have access to those color copies. Um, also, work in like classwork can be more interactive, so you can drag and drop, you can draw on it, um, which you can do on regular paper, but you can do things with technology and tools that we don't have access to on paper. The third benefit is there are more customization options online than there would be on paper. With an online notebook, you can highlight, you can draw, um, which obviously you can do on paper, but you can change fonts, you can change colors, um, you can resize things to make them bigger or smaller. You can zoom into a paper. So if the print is too small, you can zoom in or you can zoom out if you want to see the whole thing at once. Um, you can also add tags to make sheets search sheets sure, searchable. Um, so what I mean by that, this is kind of an advanced feature, but what I mean by that, like if you are thinking of a worksheet as theme, or if you are thinking of a worksheet as transversals, or you remember vertical angles better than you remember the word transversal, you can add that tag in and then later when you are looking for those notes and you can't remember what the name of the note is, but you remember that it had vertical angles in it, you can search for vertical angles. Or if you remember um, that it was talking about Romeo and Juliet, but you don't remember what the worksheet was called, you can search for Romeo and Juliet instead of having to know the actual name of it. Another benefit is you and I can both edit it. This means that if I make a mistake on a worksheet or Ms. Harlan makes a mistake on a worksheet and instead of having to 
cross that out all every class period or having to um, tell every student to ignore that question. Um, or if you make a mistake, we can go in and fix it rather than having to cross it out or get a new, a new paper. An especially awesome benefit is unlimited copies. One of the biggest problems we have is making copies. Um, so this will save us time, which I know that doesn't matter much to you guys, but it'll save us time. We can distribute these papers right to your notebooks while we're at home. Um, but what that means is we don't have to make copies in the morning and we don't have to, we only have a limited number of copies. So instead of saying, well, I, I guess I only need 30 of these and they'll just share a paper. Um, we have unlimited copies. Everybody can have their own paper. Um, the whole like, oh, you lost your copy. Uh, I can't give you another one isn't a problem anymore. Or, um, hey, I'm out of copies and um, I don't have time to go make some more right now. So I will go print you a copy on my planning period and then I can give you another copy later. Um, if you mess up and you want to start completely over, all I have to do or all me and Ms. Harlan have to do is redistribute that paper to you. So there's no more of that, like, oh, we have a limited number of copies. Um, you'll just have to deal with it. Another less visible benefit is that we have access anywhere your teachers do. Having access anywhere could benefit you in a couple of ways. Um, I have access. I don't have to go get your papers. We don't have to go find your papers. We don't have to wait for you to turn in your paper in order for us to check it. Um, this should be faster for you uh, to get feedback. How did I do on that? Also, um, those silly little things in class where you come up to our desk and you ask us, hey, what about this? Um, and we have to say, okay, go grab your binder and let me look or go get your paper and let me look. And you have to go back to your seat and grab it. We already have the access to your notebook at uh, through our app. So you don't have to go back and forth doing that, which sounds like a small thing, but it could be a a convenience at least. Lastly, your binder won't get broken into or lost. So this one seems trivial, but it's uh, it's a common problem that your binder gets uh, lost or your papers get lost or someone gets into your, uh, a lot of, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I think someone took that out of it or your paper, the hole punches in your paper kind of fall apart and then your papers start to fall out. Uh, your binder gets messy or dirty or starts to break like the spine comes apart. Um, none of that should be a problem anymore and no one else can get in there except for you and me. All in all, there are a ton of benefits. Um, all of these are small but um, cumulative reasons as to why this online binder hopefully will be awesome. We are hoping that you're on board, that you're with us, um, and you're, if not excited to do this, at least okay with doing it. Um, however, if you are still have a lot of reservations, uh, you think it's gonna be a nightmare, um, please give it a chance. And uh, we wanna hear how you feel about it. We wanna know what things are going well, what things aren't going well. So if you are having issues, feel free to uh, keep those in mind and we're gonna do a reflection um, in about a month or so to see how you guys are feeling about the online binder, what things that uh, you feel have gone well, what things you are irritated with. So you will have a chance to be heard. Okay, so today's assignment, um, this is us starting getting it set up. So we're gonna do four things today. Um, the first thing you're going to do is get into your notebook for the first time. This is kind of annoying, um, but you won't have to do this every time. After you get it set up, 
it's much easier to access each time and I'll explain that later. Then you're going to colorize your section labels um, and you're gonna transfer your information from your paper to the online notebook. Uh, and finally, you'll do a classwork assignment inside class notebook. Step one, go to the LHS website. Step two, click on employee email. This is not just for employees, this is just a link that will take you to Outlook. If you access it through Clever normally, that's fine as well. Then you're gonna click on the waffle and then Teams. The waffle is what they call it. It's that little three by three grid of dots in the top left corner. Uh, then you're gonna click on Teams. You may have to scroll down in your apps or even click on more apps to get to it. Next, find your class. Uh, you're gonna need to, you may need to scroll to find your class. Um, obviously, if you're in Ms. Harlan's class, it won't say Dykes. It will just say, I believe, second or third or fifth or um, whatever period. Click on Class Notebook on the left. Okay, you are going to click Open in Browser, which is kind of in the middle, um, not all the way at the top, but it's kind of at the top of Class Notebook options. And then you're going to click Open in Desktop App and then open OneNote. Okay, you should be in. Um, if you are not in, which I have concerns that about this working because when I tried it on a student computer, it didn't. So if it did not work, click help, it didn't work, and it should take you to a help section. Um, if, it doesn't, if the link doesn't work, then you can skip ahead to slide 38. Um, I believe it's 38. Um, if it did work and you're ready to go, then click I'm in and it'll take you to today's assignment. Okay, you've accomplished step one, get into my notebook for the first time. Now it is time to colorize your section labels. Okay, so these are your sections. They are essentially like tabs in your binder or dividers in your binder. Um, I, we want you to colorize them because this is one way we are gonna to check to make sure you did today's assignment. We're gonna log into everybody's notebook and make sure their um, sections are colorized. It is a part of your work today, so you do have to do this. You cannot leave them all gray or else you will not have done um, the assignment. Um, you can customize, this is one of those things that I was talking about, how it's kind of fun that you can customize your binder to fit your personality. You can choose whatever colors you would like. Um, you can put all of them to be the same color. However, it will benefit you in the long run to have different colors. So come up with a, a color scheme. Okay, you have colorized your section labels. Now it's time to transfer your information from your uh, data chart, your uh, data tracker that is in your binder currently into your new online binder. So you will need that in front of you. Okay, first you need to go to your data tracker. So you're gonna have to click on the data tab and then you're gonna pull up the data tracker. Now, if you uh, click on the little like books like leaning on each other over at the side, or if you click on the two like expand arrows at the top, that will make it bigger so that you can see everything. The data tracker is one thing that doesn't like, it's hard to see all on one page um, or without scrolling. However, um, it will be easier to use and um, you can zoom in and out as you need. Then you are going to put in, once you're in the data tracker, you're gonna put in your scores. So you're going to want to put in the number of correct in the top row and the um, percentiles in the bottom row. Uh, you should have, especially in math, you should have two trackers now. So that's something you're going to have to be careful about. Uh, your winter and your fall benchmark are kind of mixed in to your old data tracker. And here they're kind of separate. And the reason for that is that the benchmarks have 
uh, 45 questions on it in math, and the progress monitoring is only had 30 in ELA it sh or in um, reading intervention. It should be all the same amount of questions, but we like to compare your fall benchmark with your winter benchmark to see how you have progressed throughout the year. You do not have a spring benchmark yet. Um, that'll be closer to the end of the year. Um, so you're gonna transfer all of those numbers over first. And the next thing you're gonna do is fill in the chart portion. So you're going to colorize the number of questions you got right, essentially. Um, so the way to do this is to highlight the cells of how many questions you got right, how, how many little boxes. Um, and then if you just click and then wait a second, that little toolbox will pop up so that you can bold and underline and stuff like that. But right to the right, there's a little paint bucket and that'll let you pick a color. Um, feel free to get as creative with this as you want. Uh, someone might want to put different rows, different colors, um, make a bunch of different colors in one column, um, make it your own. This is another benefit to being online instead of on paper. You can be as creative as you want here. There is also a draw option to where you can open up the pin and color it in with like a pin. There's even like a like a metallic pin and a rainbow pin and stuff like that. The only issue there is that can be kind of a pain on the trackpad. So you have trans successfully transferred all of your information from your data tracker, all of it, not just the first couple, um, to your new data tracker. So the, the online data tracker. Yay, you did it. We are so proud of you. You got um, your notebook set up so it's ready to access anytime. You will not have to go through that every time. Um, from now on, your online binder should be easily accessible in the um, OneNote at the bottom of your screen. Should be on your, every student I've seen so far has had that OneNote pinned to their taskbar. Um, if you can't find it, you can always click in the start section and look for it in there, or you can type in OneNote. Um, but it should be just there every time. You don't have to do go through all of that every time. Um, so this is where we part ways um, for the reading students. Um, Ms. Harlan will have an assignment for you um, separate from this. Um, but if you are math, you need to continue to the next slide. Okay, so you are ready to roll. You have completed three of the four assignments. It is time to work on the classwork assignment in your binder. Um, so you're actually going to put this class notebook to work. Um, so what you're going to do is click on the classwork section of your binder. Once you click there, you will see three assignments so far, maybe more. Um, you are only responsible for one of them today. It is the triangles or transversals and triangles practice, I believe it's called. Um, once you get there, it's going to pop up on the right. It's going to be cut off. If you click the little library, like the books leaning against each other, as seen in the GIF, um, it will make the screen bigger. Um, this is a little bit of a mistake on my part. I think I zoomed in too much when I, or I made it too big when I assigned it. Um, the next time I'll make it smaller. Um, but this is a Google form embedded, or sorry, a Microsoft form embedded into class notebooks. So you can work right within it. You do not have to like go to an, like my website and click on the form link. It's right there. Um, so you should be able to answer the questions within the app. Um, when you are done with this, you are done for the day. You need to let me know that you have completed everything so I can check all of your assignments and um, give you a grade. If you do not finish this today, uh, I'll give you more instruction on that. I believe that it will likely be a 
like a homework assignment, almost like a finish it in Wolverine time situation. Um, but uh, I will give you those instructions if you let me know. Okay, if you're here, it's because you completed everything or maybe you just scrolled to the next slide because it seemed like the next thing to do. You are done. You're ready to get out of this presentation. The next section is just for help to get into Class Notebook. It's just linked into the, into the presentation. So you may move on um, and close this presentation unless you need to go back through any of these slides to help you with something you maybe didn't accomplish. Um, have a great day. Okay, so it didn't work um, and you couldn't open the notebook. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna first click the little purple icon at the bottom of your screen with the N on it. Um, that's the OneNote app. Um, if you can't see that there, if it's not already pinned to your bottom screen, search for OneNote in the search bar to the left there, that white search bar. Then after you've clicked on the app, it should open up and you should see this, you should see whatever your default notebook is with a little down arrow, click that, and then you're gonna click on more notebook. You should see the notebook from this class in that list. Um, if you do, click the box, um, or you may be able to click the name. Um, if you do not see it in the list, click that purple link and see if it will bring up more notebook options. Um, if none of that works, see me or Ms. Harlan. Um, then click open and you should be in. Um, so if you click the green link, um, okay, now I'm in, it should take you back. If it doesn't, um, go back to slide 28. Um, if it, you're not in, you don't have your notebook up still, see me or Ms. Harlan. Make sure you've tried a couple things. Um, we're working on being more independent.